What's up? Oh. Oh, yeah. Welcome to another episode of Velocity. Hello and welcome here to the Velocity Chaos Podcast, coming to you at the speed of sound from the Hexapod Soundhouse in Cleveland, Ohio. My name is Luke and I am joined by my wonderful co-host, Nick. How you doing? Doing well, but I'm not supposed to answer that, right? We're supposed to keep these clean. <laughs> oh, right. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Terribly. <laughs> I'm doing super well. This is going to be super awesome. And we're here with our super DJ. Super DJ Knuckle Puck. Hey, hey guys. What's going on? Glad to be here. Glad you are glad to be here. Luke, what is going on in the show today? We got a lot of super stuff. Super. Uh, Nick's got some chest hair at the top. He doesn't like damn thieves. And you know what? I got to learn you something. I got some party knowledge for you. I've always wanted to know what money laundering actually meant. And we're going to dive into that. And Nick's got something we got to see about a stretch limo. And then uh, DJ Knucklepuck, he's got uh, something on his mind that we got to do some master debating on. All that and more here. And just a reminder for our returning listeners and a note for our new friends here at the Velocity Chaos Podcast, we explore the highest heights of human knowledge and the lowest depths of crude humor. Our mission is to tickle that pink thing between your ears, poke that frontal lobe, or sometimes just smash the laugh box. So hop in and buckle up for an infotainment ride across the airwaves. And before we get into it, uh, just to remind y'all out there, follow us on Instagram at Velocity Chaos Pod and on Facebook. Also, drop us some stars on iTunes, some love on Spotify. Toss us a sub on YouTube. We're also up there. You can also interact with us and, and uh, you know give us ideas. Tell us about your favorite segments or why you just hate our show at Velocity Chaos Podcast at gmail.com. And we look forward to hitting you up there. Uh, but thanks, as always, to our regular listeners and welcome to the new guys. Before we do another dang thing, we're going to make the connection. This is a warm-up that we've been trying to incorporate more into our show so that we can just get our imaginations flowing. It, you know, Follow along. Have fun with it. You know, Participate. If you're in your car, shout it out. Shout out anything. This is just word association. So uh, we got to make the connection, bridge the gap, if you will, between two different words that DJ Knucklepuck is going to provide for us. So hit us with them. All right, guys. Let's make one with those muscles. Let's yeah, go. Let's go. go. Warm it up. Come on. You got the muscle. Uh, All right. Today, we're going to make the connection between volcanoes and horse racing. Okay. Ooh. I'll go first. Yeah. Okay. Volcanoes. Hot. Cooking. Tomato. Pasta. Wheat. Fields. Prairie. Uh, Westerns. Cowboys. Riding. Horses. Kentucky Derby. Horse races. Yeah. Right. That was smooth. Good. That was good. smooth. Volcanoes to horse racing. Loving it. You know what I don't like, though? Get it off. I don't like thieves. Ooh. That taco meat out there. Get this taco <laughs> meat out here. We are entering a segment called chest hair where we got to get something off our chests. Uh, this one I'm getting off my chest that I cannot stand people who take things. Now, look, I'm going to make this very simple because I know there's a lot of different type of thievery. There's a lot of different types of stealing. I'm kind of just getting down into the base, the basic of it. And like not white collar crime, not like moving money around, not tricking people. I'm talking about if you have something in your yard, in your house, and I come just take it from you. That's the kind of stealing I'm talking about here. Okay. I just yeah. hate that. I hate it. I think it's despicable. It's so important. It's number eight on the top 10 laws of all time. Also known as the 10 commandments, which everyone should bow down to. Uh, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, no, but hey, they're they're good ideas. The t the t uh, the ten. I thought it was seven. The, the seven <laughs> commandments. I just stop at number seven. You're Lucky number seven. No, it's three. number eight. Thou shall not steal. <laughs> oh, thou shall not steal. And this is all coming out of an experience that I had recently. Somebody stole my bike, and I really like this bike. It kind of hurts me a little bit, and I you know I, I feel almost guilty, right? Because I know it's partially my fault for leaving it out and blah blah blah. 
But the fact that somebody would just take something that I actually cared about, like I bought this bike uh, from a shop. I like really looked around and it wasn't even that it was that expensive, but it was like the first bo- a bike I bought as an adult. I had a personal relationship with it. I have a goal this year of like hitting 365 miles on a bike across, you know, the whole summer. And somebody kind of like took this from me uh, just right out of my garage. So that's what I'm kind of getting into of just like, it's a, it's like everyone will say it's a violation and all that stuff. But in a way, it's just, it's a terrible thing to do to another person because you never know what it is that you're taking. Somebody probably just saw it and says, I can flip this. I can ride this. I can do whatever I want with it. But you don't know what it means to the other, to the person you're taking it from, you know? So yeah. I just think that there's such a, like a repercussion though, too. It's like, it's what brought us locks. It's what brought us like to, to fence in our yards and to protect our ourselves. And it just creates like this uh, animosity towards humanity in many ways. So it doesn't just hurt the person uh, that way of like, you have that thing that's gone, but it also affects your mentality towards people and your neighborhood. Like that there's people in my neighborhood that'll just walk by and take stuff. Um, so that's really frustrating. Uh, and again, Look, we all like watching Ocean's Eleven. I love Ocean's <laughs> Eleven. I love Ocean's Twelve. I love Ocean's Thirteen. Yeah, I even like Ocean's Eight. But the thing is, <laughs> the point is that they're stealing from bad guys. Okay, it's always fun to see us go steal from the sheriff of Nottingham, have a Robin Hood, give back to the poor, right? But I hate it when middle class steals from middle class or from poor people stealing from poor people. It's just it's terrible that people think that they're entitled to these things to just take them. Um, so anyway, uh, that's me getting off my chest. It's funny. Like in Saudi Arabia, I, I was like, what are, what are like the penalties in another place around the world, uh, for thieves, you know? Cause in, in the past, the middle ages, it used to be like, they would flog you if it was, you know, you pay for flesh. Like if you couldn't pay back, like what you stole times a certain amount, oh, like, say you, you stole my like piece of ore (laughs) that is worth like five shekels or whatever. And you were sentenced to pay 40 shekels and you had no money. I had zero shekels. (laughs) Zero shekels. You had five shekels. We're going to take the equivalent, like we're going to take the other, you know, 35 shekels out of your back, out of your hide. And so you get flogged or they chop off your ear because like they want people to know like this person is a thief. Like, Oh, don't trust this person with your <laughs> valuables, like you know. Yeah, um, labeled. So there was a permanent, a permanent record on your body uh, that that you were a thief. But even in current current day, some countries in the Middle East, uh, they can still punish you by chopping off your hand. Yeah. I've, I've seen pictures and stuff. Um, the crazy thing is, like, there are some rules, so we're not just like willy nilly about it. Like, you you have there's like six rules, like. It had to have been a protected uh, item. The owner has to ask for it back. But this is key because the owner could be like, I, you know, will uh, I pity you. So, like, I'm not going to charge you, essentially. Uh, but if they do, then you go to step three, which is, like, there has to be two witnesses of either somebody hearing the person confess to taking it hmm. or, uh, like, somebody have seen them. Now CCTV cameras will, like, uh, count so technology has come into play. Camera one and camera, camera two are witnesses. <laughs> camera one, camera two, camera <laughs> one, camera two. Uh, there it can't be like food. Like you can't yeah. chop somebody's hand off for stealing an apple. No evidence. What if it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What if it's leftovers, man? He's stealing. Yeah. Oh leftovers. man, my buffalo wild wings leftovers. <laughs> I'm gonna chop both your hands off. I never understood that. Like it, when when there are leftovers in a fridge. Yeah. If you didn't put it there. Why Why do you think you could eat it? <laughs> oh, I get what you Oh, mean. yeah. yeah. I, I, there's no justification. It's funny. I, I don't know. Some people don't get that line of argument, though. Like, I always ask people, can I eat your leftovers? Yeah. yeah I, if can you I have ask, that? Yeah. And people are like, why are you asking me? We live in the same house. It's like, I was trying to be polite. Yeah, because yeah. you put it there. I don't know what your future plans are for your that food. And food, that's yeah. it. That yeah. goes back into what I'm saying. Like, the person who stole my bike didn't know that I had a fitness goal. I was trying to change my fitness and my health. Yeah. Right? They don't give a shit about me. They just freaking took it. And it's yeah. like, 
that's the same thing with eating <laughs> food. Like if you like are planning out your lunches for that week, you're like, I'll just eat those leftovers a day from now. And they're just gone. Yeah. You're kind of like, Oh, it wrecks your whole thing. Now yeah. what do I do? <laughs> do I have to, you know, go get food? Does that distract me from my work yeah, day? You got your morning routine. Okay. I'm whatever. Get ready. All right. I'm going to go downstairs, grab my lunch, yeah. head out, go downstairs, grab the lunch. Okay. Where's the lunch <laughs> process? Is it back here? Now you're searching. Now Waste time's time. ticking. Yeah, time's ticking. Like, wait, did I, did I, I eat, eat it? that last night? <laughs> but I can't ask Jimmy if he ate it. You know, I got to, I got to, got to go to work. Now you're already, you know, you're a minute and a half behind your normal schedule. Yeah. You miss your parking spot. And now you got to park further. Whole butterfly effects happening. And I think that's the whole point behind the commandment: "Thou shalt not steal." Is yeah. like they, it's a, it's a tenant. Like it's not even the spiritual aspect of it. It's the idea that a society cannot function if people are constantly one worried about losing all their stuff because people can't grow and continue to move forward. Yeah. And two, if people are stealing from each other, it breaks down society because then it just becomes it's anarchy. You know, yeah. it's, an, it's, a, it's a manifestation of anarchy. And not only are they like you said, not not only did he take your bike, now he's taking peace of mind as well. Not yeah. to get all like. Uh, yeah, but it, it is like you said. Night, you got to make sure your your garage is closed. You got to have locks on the stuff. Yeah, you know, so it's not getting stolen. And now, when you ride it somewhere, you got to lock it up. I mean, probably do that anyways. But yeah, I lock it up. You know, just because you don't want to be a fool. But like, yeah. I'm in your neighborhood. My garage is out on a back alley, so it's not like somebody was just cruising through the neighborhood, and spotted and swiped it. It was just no. like it had to have been somebody who is either in the neighborhood or is just I don't know. It's it's weird. So the, the last two, just to wrap it up, the, the value in, in Saudi Arabia has to be worth like $21,000 USD. And oh, then, for a hand? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the thief and the uh, has to be an adult and sane. So, you know, I just wanted to put that out there that like, I'm not saying that, oh, in the Middle East, they're just chopping people. Yeah. Hands off. Like, I wasn't trying to be like that. I'm just saying that there's still some serious repercussions around the world, but they take it seriously. It's in their, it's in their Quran. It's in a couple other holy texts about very clearly stating like, Men and women, if you take stuff, we can chop your hand off. Yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting to look at. I think it's actually better, though, for people to think that they're going to chop your hand off for stealing like sure. a piece of candy. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah. I mean, yeah, there are, there are, you know, I'm sure they, they frame people if they, if they want or. Yeah, you got to be careful with that stuff. But I it, think these it, are all reasonable. Yeah, $20,000 20, worth of stuff. Like, okay, that's a lot of stuff to yeah. steal. And there's a lot of stuff you have to keep track of to persecute or prosecute somebody. Yeah. You think there's a dad in the Middle East that's missing his hand for like total reasonable, understandable <laughs> things, but like tells his kid, like whenever he goes to the cookie jar, just be like, this is what they do when you take from the cookie jar. Yeah. <laughs> this is what they do. And he goes to, goes to school, asks the teacher, like, do they really cut your hand off if you steal? And they go, yes, yes, yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah. And he's like, dad got his hand off for taking cookies. All the adults <laughs> in that country get it. He just had diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an unfortunate accident. They had to save his life. Rashik, don't forget to take your insulin. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, shut up. I was watching, I was watching a comedian this one time and he, uh, he was, he, or he's, uh, he's an inspirational speaker, but he has no arms and no legs. And he goes, he said, my favorite thing to do is go to water parks. He goes, I go down the water slide and pop out at the bottom and kids go, oh, what happened? He like looks around and he goes, Oh my God! Where are my arms and legs? <laughs> all the Scare all the kids. Did that anyway. guy climb Everest or something like that? One of those mountains? Oh, totally different guy. But okay, I'm sure there, there he probably has like his own jokes too. Yeah, uh, he's he has stolen many things. <laughs> that guy has stolen yeah. many things. Uh, he just can't help himself. He's an <laughs> addict. Know, he's a klepto <laughs> over here. Uh, anyway, in the United States, I mean, I'm just thinking about it. we do take armed robbery very, very seriously here. I mean, up to 20 years in prison. It is a it is a felony armed robbery. Um, now, if uh, I did, I'm, I, I'm no lawyer, but looking it up, there is a difference between burglary and theft. And burglary is like you have an intent, so you case the joint and then you hit it. So like, or you're like, I'm intending to like go in and take that. Um, and then theft is like you're at a, a party and there's like money out and you it's an opportunist Link. essentially. Um, there's a lot more that goes into burgling. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like broken locks, like entering and opening a door. Like in many states, I think like in Ohio, like if you open an unlocked door to enter a home, it's still considered burglary. Breaking. Mm. The door would have to literally be like open, and you'd have to move in. You had to fall. Oh, no. Yeah. The wind took <laughs> the me <way>. in. <laughs> um, and so this is where it's like, I think in, in the United States, I think it's crazy how 
I mean, a lot of lawyer websites, you know, firms are saying like, oh, call us if you've been, you know, if you're being accused of theft, like we can make sure it goes down to a misdemeanor. And like, you just have people working to prove that it wasn't that bad because theft, theft is what happened to me. And if this person got caught, the worst that would happen to them is like they'd be given a fine. You can go to jail for up to a year apparently, but they probably wouldn't hand that out a lot. But like, just think about that. Like, That's they're gonna culture, get yeah. slapped with like a hundred thousand dollar fine, and they're gonna be like, <laughs> "Yeah, right." Like, what? I'm not fucking paying that. Yeah. Instead of teaching the idea and being behind the idea that theft is wrong, there's literally people working to be like, "Listen, man, I'm gonna get you off. Don't you worry. Yeah, like, I'm, yeah. gonna get, <laughs> I'm gonna get you out of this." It'd be interesting that if you were convicted, like maybe you when you lose your whole hand, but like a pinky, you know, like yeah, like, slowly. like like if you were convicted, By the knuckle. If you were convicted <laughs> of theft, you know. Uh, yeah, like, you know what it's I mean? Like a like, dollar figure for every knuckle. It's yeah, like, yeah, it's like, yeah. This is this is a hundred dollars. That's four hundred dollars. And they do it yeah. one at a time too. Like, so yeah. if you stole a thousand dollars worth of stuff, it's like one hundred, yeah. two hundred, and it's it's one each. Yeah. Each one's a separate chop, so you gotta you gotta endure ten oh, chops. Shit. Is a little more sadistic. I was also thinking, <laughs> you're like, I got, I got a lot more mileage out of this hand. Like, yeah. you know, like I can keep going. Take my left one. So I don't know. I just think that's a little. Like going through it, like if I could find the person, well, I mean, or the person who was stolen from gets to slap you or something. Yeah. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Even if you were like, hey, I found the guy who stole my bike. They're like, oh, all right. Did you get your bike back? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. That's if it. the person is, it, it, the, the person should have to get your materials back or something. But yeah. anyway, like I just, it's a little lax. I understand armed robbery is pretty intense because, uh, well, if they cut your hand off, it won't be armed anymore. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, uh, I, yeah, I just think, I think it's a little light. I think, I think our theft rules are, are a little light. They got, they got bigger problems like marijuana. Yeah. Or the cops <laughs> should get, well, I was going to say the cops should get, um, incentivized to find thieves, but then you're going to just see a lot of abuse of that. There's yeah, been finding people there, off the street and being like, I found the guy. And it's like, yeah. so can't go. I get it. Framing. You can't simplify certain things. Look, there's it's, a lot of political uh, like problems in the country right now. But to me, like theft is something that's very clearly just like, that's wrong. It's it, like, and yeah. like we should, we should make it serious. A lot of people think that like common th- petty theft is like hilarious or interesting. And it's not. It's a day ruiner. Yeah. It, maybe even more. But yeah. anyway, that that leads to um, even uh, like surveillance companies like like Wise and Ring, like oh, they love they love theft. Yeah, yeah. And now yeah. you now you like well, sh- shit. Maybe I should put up a camera back here in the alley. Fear mongering. Yeah, yeah. They love that. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a bad idea. But then it's yeah. So I mean, I don't know. We'll see if I, you know, will put anything up or any deterrent. I mean, yeah. It, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm gonna buy another bike right now. Just, it, not because I'm afraid of it getting stolen, but I'm just like, ugh, like, that's a couple hundred bucks to buy a nice bike. Yeah. So you could put out a bear trap. I thought about that. I thought of baiting them. <laughs> I thought of baiting this person like yeah. that. But that turns into like some weird shit. I'm just like, I'm in. I I, I, I think it'd be amazing to to do that to put another bike in ooh, there. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Go ooh, I got one. Yeah. So okay, have you seen the video of a, the guy who taught himself how to ride a bike, but it, oh, it backwards. turns backwards. Yeah, yeah. So you do that to a bike, and then set up a camera, <laughs> and then watch them try to steal it. <laughs> and then you beat him with a baseball bat yeah. when he falls. Exactly. <laughs> and then laugh. And then laugh as you're beating him with a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but still, it would be interesting to to bait somebody because if they know, like my my wife did point out, once they've seen that and they took something from you, they're gonna keep watching. Like yeah. if they think you're an idiot, like they might, they might check our doors, you know, I'm about to go on a business trip. They like, now I'm a little like, shit. like, well, this will air after that. So they won't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll catch them after. Anyway, don't yeah. steal. It's bad. It's, uh, it's a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> I think a pet peeve of a lot of people and I'm never going to change on this. And look again, this isn't the white collar crime. This isn't the political, you know, like pontificating of who's stealing and blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about if I just come to your house and take something from you, like let's just have a basic community perspective on this shit to just don't do that. Don't do that. So That's, chest hair, 
chest hair done. That's yeah, that's good. I mean, that leads me to the to the next point, which is the stuff. The stuff has all of the goods in it. That's right. It's got the goods, which means it has vitamins, minerals, natural essences, unnatural flavors. It's got it all. The stuff has been safely tested on humans, animals, and probably even some aliens. The stuff is tried and true. When I'm feeling angry, tired, and melancholy, the stuff picks me right up and sends me on my way feeling better than ever. Wait a minute. Maybe I've just been going through withdrawals. Anywho, get 30% off your next shipment of the stuff using code VCPOD30 at checkout. This is not an actual product, service, or idea, just in case you thought it was. It's not... If there is something out there with the same name, we are unaware and have no affiliation and offer no judgment on the actual product, service, or idea. This close to being sued right there. Yeah. <laughs> By the Almost. stuff. The Almost. stuff company I in Illinois. <laughs> Could have got us. Could have got us. I, I zoned out for a minute. We got it. We're clear. We're in the clear. They stole, they stole my words. <laughs> <laughs> Give them back. So I had some... Uh, on, on that theft... I'm gonna, we're going to a white collar theft. You were, you this were, is perfect. You were on the base. Now we're going up the shaft, <laughs> okay. up the shaft of thievery. <laughs> up the shaft. Yeah. So maybe we're ascending. we'll get to the tip eventually. We're going to find out who's sh- at the head of yeah. all this. Got, pe- got petty crimes. We got money laundering up here. <laughs> you so use two hands? If, if, it's, if it's a big enough amount. <laughs> if the spread, of, if the girth of yeah. this problem is large enough. <laughs> yes. You got to use two hands. Got to. It's, it's the only way. The way. So party knowledge. This is uh, this is to help you next time you're at a party and uh, you're so you got, somehow money money laundering gets brought up and you're like, actually, I know a little bit about it. Not that I do it. I'm just I'm just hip on the knowledge. I know all about this shaft. Yeah. So I mean, the thing is, you you had recommended uh, watching um, the Ozarks. Yeah, Ozark. Ozark. Yes, yeah. just one. <laughs> just the just the one Ozark. So I, I watched the I watched the pilot. Nice. It wasn't my thing. I don't know. Maybe I'll a try lot of it again. Feel that way. But I was like, okay, I, I see money laundering in a lot of a lot of TV shows and movies. What is it? Yeah. And what what is you know cleaning cleaning money and stuff like? So you just throw it in a washer. That's what I like. Get the fingerprints yeah. off. No DNA. <laughs> That's actually kind of kind of how it they got the name money laundering. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Um, I wish I would have researched that. I did hear about that. <laughs> part okay but uh mobster prohibition yeah mobster when uh laundromats kind of run oh, money through it oh okay got it yeah yeah yep. so what is money laundering you ask you already know but for you out there who don't know like me who didn't know before i started reading all this stuff and we'll have the links in the notes but by definition money laundering the concealment of the origins of illegally obtained money typically by means of transfer involving foreign banks or legitimate businesses yeah that's uh Ipso facto. I don't know why I said that. I just felt like it'd make me sound smart. But, you know, you're doing shady stuff and you make money. And now you got to pump it back into the system. Yeah. Well, without you, getting caught. Yeah, I get it. Because, like, on each dollar bill, there's identifying numbers. And people, I mean, there's a lot of smart people in the FBI. Uh, the interesting thing, especially after watching Ozark, is, is all of the banking part of this now where back in the day, it was just you put it through a car wash, like Breaking Bad, like that's how they figure it out. Sorry, spoiler alert. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> but like the idea is it's, it's it was put it through a business, cook the books. Mm-hmm. But now moving, I mean, there's people out there who just move money across, bing, 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 bing. And it, like some of this automated where these little bank accounts are just shifting money around and it just confuses people or it's to hide their trail. And it's... I, don't, I could work probably for 10 years and not understand this. It's very, very complicated. It's working very hard. <laughs> Did to, you hear that, FBI? Yeah. I am not a not, money yeah. launderer. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is not something to, to get you guys to do. This is just so you can be aware. This is Next this. time it comes up, you're like, hmm, I know about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that when you get tempted, when the other teenagers are out there saying, hey, man, try this money laundering, you're like, no, I'll pass. Dare, baby, dare. <laughs> dare <yeah. laughs> well, that, that's the other thing with money laundering, or I, I didn't I haven't gotten into really anything. But so here's one of the things: is yeah, you have to have a large amount of money to okay. be able to do money laundering. Okay, it's yeah. not just like oh, I'm gonna be a money launderer. Like so, you have to <laughs> you have to be you know pushing drugs or something or something stealing illegal. bikes, stealing bikes. <laughs> you know, some sort of illegal thing that you can already get in trouble for. Yeah, that you're having this income from okay. that you're trying to put back in. So there's three stages 
of money laundering. Got it. We got the placement, layering, and integration. Okay. These are the three three. So we're coming up the shaft of money laundering. We you know we did the petty theft with the bikes and you know uh, the ore and. <laughs> And now we're coming up the shaft. So <laughs> placement, it's the riskiest step. Know that one. It's the first step, but it involves placing Ooh. funds into bank accounts. Uh, there are now laws and regulations of uh, of putting money into accounts under the Currency and Foreign Transactions Reporting Act of 1970. Okay. Which basically, it's any transfer, withdrawal, cashier checks, whatever it is, needs to be reported to the U.S. Department of Treasury, Financial Crimes and Enforcement uh, Network. If... It's above ten thousand dollars. Really? Okay. Yeah. So anytime you make a transfer of more than ten thousand dollars, they're checking on it. Wow. Okay. So got it. Keep it at nine ninety nine. If <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying you're going to do this. So how does that? How do you? If you have a big chunk of change, where, where, it's. I mean, you, you have to break it up across multiple bank accounts. Yeah. So yeah, it would be multiple depositors, multiple accounts. Like. So I had a buddy that actually did this for a living. Like that was all his job was to scan. Uh, was to scan for these anomalies like that, wow. was, and then they would, you know, and then they would decide what to do with it after he found them. His whole thing was he would go through financial reports of just lists and lists and lists of people, and it was exactly that. He was like, he was like, I wouldn't really look like if anything was like below a certain dollar amount, I really wouldn't bother with it. Like we sure. didn't look, and a lot of the stuff they would be like, okay, we're looking for something in this pattern of dollar amount, yeah, and that's what he would observe for. So like the ten thousand dollar figure, if he was just doing general work, he'd be like, yeah, I would look at things for like ten grand. But if I saw deposits that were like specifically like a dollar off or two dollars below, you know what I mean? Because like you'll see everybody yeah. and their brother on YouTube like, if you want to avoid anybody looking at your stuff, just <laughs> do it for. You know, nine 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 nine. It's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah, somebody's like, that's fucking strange. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, the FBI has seen that video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They must be watching Instagram too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that yeah, that's. Ex- <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's like if, if we had like a film company or like we we're doing commercials, we had like yeah, know, two thousand, two thousand. We kept depositing like two thousand, and there's like a twenty thousand. Sure. What, what's this twenty thousand yeah. for? And then they'd probably you know check like, hey, is this legitimate? Like, yeah, we actually did this huge commercial. So it's like, okay. But that's it. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, you you can make sense of it, but yeah. Or if it was, you know, like like DJ Knuckle Puck was saying, you know, you just always. That's why like, you need like, to have a good a good front. Yeah. Right. You need to have a good front. Yeah. Exactly. So so what we're gonna be no. <laughs> yeah. So typically things that are like big ticket items, right? Like big casinos, films, um, probably concerts, or opening up a shop, or. Stuff that's like passive income. That's why, like, uh, what did you say? Laundry mats. Yeah, that laundry makes a lot mats. of sense because you could be like you know, pool halls or something. How or, are you gonna disprove that I just cleaned a hundred suit jackets? Yeah, like you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. How are you gonna disprove that? In Cleveland, there was a huge bust. Uh, I mean, it's it's multiple times was uh, car washes. Uh, the mm-hmm. do-it-yourself car washes. Yeah, there's a lot of people that were uh, selling cocaine. Um, that were that was like big cocaine bust. I remember that. that. Okay, I remember that bust. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, and it's like yeah, there's been a lot of car washes getting popped up around here. I don't How'd know. you make eighty million out of quarters? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. a lot of quarters. Because the FBI is like, yeah. there's literally not that many quarters in yeah. the U.S. We know this. <laughs> it's insane though. But it, it, so that, that that goes on to so getting the money in. Okay. Step one, that was placement layering. Step two. It's the step that creates the confusion. So oh. you get the money in, and then now it involves complex financial maneuvers that slice and dice the initial placement. Common layering tactics include wire transfers between bank accounts, often held in multiple names at multiple banks in multiple countries. Jeez. Property or service transactions with shell companies, legal business entities that exist only on paper and perform no legitimate economic function. <laughs> High dollar purchases of tangible goods or commodities such as yachts, luxury cars, gold, Purchases of real estate investment properties, including luxury homes and condominiums. So shell companies, that was the one that, yeah. that when I was first reading it, it was like, yeah, this bank did this and uh, it got caught with shell companies. Like, ha, oh, I knew that gas station was a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Those lousy yeah. oil barons. I'd never go in there and like, oh, shell companies. That's okay. It's not <laughs> shell. It's <laughs> So it's a company, like I said here, it's... It's like what? if we if if I had you know Luke Linguini, and you know it was, it was all in the books like oh Luke Linguini is pulling in you know nine thousand dollars a month a or something or a night yeah yeah yeah, but you know you go looking like all right where's Luke Linguini, 
It's no, <laughs> you can't see Luke's Linguini. Luke's Linguini's non-existent. Oh, only it's a private show. Luke's it's Linguini yeah. is a private show. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got it in the back room. Here. Reservation, <laughs> reservation. You got to make reservations. <laughs> yeah, you can't just find Luke's Linguini. You can't just eat eat Luke's Linguini. You got to make an appointment for that. But yeah, so they would have companies like that that. They're pumping this like, oh, okay, yeah, Luke's Linguini's got this much money yeah. and uh, Nick's Nuggets, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, this much. And we do a two for one show if you want. <laughs> yeah, but only over here in the back room. Yeah, <laughs> oh. two Nuggets, one Linguini. It's <laughs> <laughs> the deal. So up the shaft we go. <laughs> up the shaft we go. Oh god. No, that's down oh. the shaft. Oh, down the, the shaft. Down, down the, the shaft to the, the nuggets. nuggets. But yeah, so that that's all that kind of stuff. Um, where you know they have these made up companies that don't exist that's wild on paper it seems seems real and then final step integration laundering laundered funds become legitimate because it generally involves legal transactions integration is regarded as the lowest risk part of laundering process although not immune to scrutiny so examples of integration sale or transfer of high dollar items purchased with laundered funds sale or Transfer of real estate purchase with laundered funds, legitimate purchases of securities or other financial instruments in the launderer or launderer's legitimate business entities' names, legitimate legitimate transactions with legal entities controlled by the launderer or their associates. This is the funny part of being a criminal with a high volume of income is that it's very hard to spend your money after yeah. you get it, which is interesting. It's So that's where these front stores, like a pizza parlor or a you know, car wash or something, oh, yeah, we need to get uh, new brushes. Uh, we, so we, we sent out this money for the brushes or something. or Like that's what we paid it, paid it for. And the, I thought this was know. the part where it's like, okay, you clean the money and you have it, and then you go out and buy a Maserati after running Luke's Linguini. <laughs> and somebody's like, this guy's making – a hundred thousand dollars a year plus on selling it's good linguine. noodles it's yeah. good linguine, let me okay tell but you. that's the part right where you you get busted because you went and bought something that's ridiculous for what you do no that's daily basis. that's basically cleaning it by buying the stuff or per making those transactions happen because oh, they're you're putting legitimate in assets. yeah they're legitimate transactions uh, buying cameras <laughs> yeah a lot of cameras for our commercials <laughs> <laughs> i needed a pasta maker <laughs> real fancy pasta maker i know pasta makers had wheels that's weird <laughs> yeah <laughs> so Paint jobs here, here's one last so during the final step of integration laundered fund oh i already said that my bad my bad <laughs> okay so um, three steps what are they again run it run back. so it was uh, placement up the shaft. Placement will come up the shaft. Layering, so layer that, and then integration. Got it. Three steps. Up three, and down. It's a three-step process. Back and forth. The money up, comes up yeah. and down. Up yeah, and but down, just round and round, round and round it until goes. the prosperity comes at the top, yes. and then you, and you got then you got your yacht and your uh, Lamborghinis. Yeah. So, <laughs> what 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 risks do we run here with laundering large Why amounts of money? Fraud. You got average prison sentence for money laundering is only 67 months. Oh, it's not bad. Not five bad. and a half years. White collar crimes. Not bad. <laughs> not bad. And plus you get put in a white collar. Yeah. Nice guy. Prison. Yeah. You're probably trading all your ideas. Come on yeah. out. Been around for longer than that. I can yeah. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you know, hey, come on. We got a business partner. <laughs> <laughs> I got this new business venture. Yeah, Luke's lasagna. The... <laughs> two. Luke's lasagna two. Yeah. <laughs> um whoop. Uh skipped the spot. My bad. So uh the minimum jail sentence for money laundering. Why do you keep doing that? My bad. This is terrible. I keep hitting the down button. Minimum jail sentence for laundering learning is one year, so you have to do at least one year, and then the minimum fine is one thousand dollars. However, fel felony money laundering has comes with a hefty minimum fine of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> so, I mean, if you got enough stocked up, you'll be all right. <laughs> but if Luke's Linguini's pulling in six million a year, yeah, I think yeah, we'll be all right. <laughs> Uh, worldwide, there are between eight hundred billion and two trillion laundered money annually. What? Yeah, they couldn't oh narrow it down. Oh my god! That's <laughs> let insane. alone the stuff they haven't found yet. Like, yeah, yeah. That was the other the other thing. So ninety percent, uh, ninety one point one percent of money laundering offenders are are imprisoned, and ninety percent of money laundering crimes go undetected. Wait, 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 wait. Ninety. Wait, 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 wait. Start yeah, over. Yeah. Start over. You're going to hear that one again. Yeah, so I do. I do. 91.1% of um, money laundering offenders are imprisoned. 
at least at some point. Yeah, so the ninety percent of the ones that they catch are imprisoned. Oh, I thought you were saying that <laughs> if you're yeah. a money launderer, you're going to no, jail. No, no. That's what I thought you were no, saying. No, no. And then this part: so ninety percent of the ones they catch are imprisoned. Go to jail. And ninety percent are uncaught. Jesus that, Christ! That do it. So they're catching ten so percent. They're catching ten percent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're they are <laughs> so getting away. With okay. I know we were being moral at the beginning of this, yeah. but I don't know. You're not making a compelling argument to keep. <laughs> don't, do <laughs> yeah, yeah. don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> don't you do it? Don't do it. We're looking at you. It, don't at do it. Don't do it in Richmond, Virginia, because it's ranked number one for white collar crimes. <laughs> oh. Seventy five hundred crimes per ten thousand people. But <laughs> how many are caught? That might be a, a boom of market. Could be even more. It's more. a saturated market. It you is. Don't wanna, it is. You don't go wanna, somewhere else. Go somewhere else. Utah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, yeah, this here logging company. You know, chop about you know a billion trees down a year. <laughs> billion trees. Yeah, you know, a whole other set of problems in your hands with that. Yeah. They're like, why is the whole of Utah not just bald? <laughs> yeah. So, Luke's logging. Luke's logging. We got we got all of these. Weren't just you put them down in the paper. That would be hilarious. <laughs> I'm a lumberjack now. <laughs> if there was a comedy about a guy named Luke or Lou who just had all these things called Lou's whatever, and he just said no one saw it. Like just Lou's logging, Lou's lasagna, Lou's linguine. <laughs> hey, I got the market on that. Lou's llamas. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking selling, you know, al- alpaca. They're not even llamas. They're alpacas. They're just like lose linguistics. We'll help you uh, with your speech impediment. <laughs> like charging like hundreds of dollars. Yeah. They're all they're all you know children of Korea. You know, South Korean businessmen. Like they're top dollars. But we are exquisite linguistics teacher here at oh, Lose yeah. Linguistics. Lose luxury homes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's prime time money laundering. Lose luxury timeshares. <laughs> oh, my God. That one writes but, itself. Yeah. So I guess a, a big thing that money launderers buy are art pieces of art. Oh, yeah. So that's oh, huge. yeah. Which made me think back to NFTs. Oh, geez. And crypto. There you go. I think that's probably going to be a new big thing is, you know, people like, oh, yeah, I just bought a bunch of crypto with my money. <laughs> I and, think that's why the governments are concerned. Yeah. And then NFTs are even probably easier for them because it's it's the same as like how you evaluate. How do you evaluate it? Yeah. Well, I evaluate it at eighty million dollars. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, eighty million dollars. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a picture of me farting into like a heat room or something. <laughs> it's like that's like beautiful. Frank from uh It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. I love it. It's a freaking air conditioner. <laughs> well, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Well, with that, I mean, I think you guys can uh, hold your it. own, and, you know, with a little bit of party knowledge there on money laundering. Three layers of the shaft. I'm Three layers. That's that. all you got to remember. Until you're at the top. Yep. Until you're at the tip of whatever oh. you got next. Luke's limos. Oh, Luke's limos. <laughs> there you go. Might as well be if you do. <laughs> If you drop, you know, a hundred million dollars on building the world's longest limo that's completely impractical, <laughs> but sells because it's a collector's items, then yes, that would be my next segment. My segment here is called You Gotta See This. So be sure to check out the links at the bottom of the page of our uh, posting. This is about the American dream. And no, not the white picket fence, the two kids and a dog, oatmeal for breakfast, steak for dinner. No, this is about the American dream ultra stretch limo. I'm, yeah. I, <laughs> wow. I thought you were going into it. If you're not interested. I am. Fine. I was I was reading some of these notes about it. I'm I, gonna, I was cheating. I'm going to go ahead anyway for our listeners out there who are excited, and I'll do this segment with Knuckle Puck. <laughs> so designed by Jay Orberg, who is a uh, like a customizer, car customizer. Um, he envisioned building the world's longest uh, road vehicle, he did this in the 1970s and based, or he based it off the um, 1970s Cadillac Eldorado, and he built this in the 80s, a hundred feet long. That's that's gratuitous. <laughs> He's compensating. <laughs> He's compensating for something. Uh, that shaft, you know. Yeah. He's compensating for the shaft. Is it a fuselage in a car, I mean, or is yeah. that just a plane? Probably in this <laughs> case, it could be used <laughs> just at that at that length. It might um, become a fuselage. So. 100 feet long, 250 foot sections with a kind of pivot hinge in the middle, kind of like you see on these big In case they got to make a turn. Or try to make a turn. (laughs) 
26 wheels was on this puppy, so that's 13 on each side. Top features, a hot tub. Oh. Which I've seen I've seen a couple that have those. The yeah, Phil yeah. Collins music video. He's just riding around LA. And That's gotta throw off some balance making turns. <laughs> or awesome. stopping. Like it's you're awesome. slowing down and you got this water that's pushing like Hey man, pass me the press. <laughs> yeah. You got some champagne. Um uh, a putting green practice course. See, that's where my mind was going when you were yeah. pitching or you, you started the segment. I was like, putting practice, huh? And then I was, you know, in my head I was you know, putting on this limo. Yeah, there you go. Well, you know, real world conditions. Uh, you know, just so you could um, make sure that you're the you know you're practicing on your way to the masters. Do you gotta uh, have magnet shoes, or is this is it like a bus with like railings, and you like you feel a stop coming, so you grab the handle? Velcro, railing? Velcro, oh, Velcro, and just like insane quads, just <laughs> insane quads, amazing glutes. Just look at me, I can't even move. Try to push me over. <laughs> Uh, and then finally to round it all off, a helicopter pad. Oh my! How big are helicopters that it would fit on a hundred foot? <laughs> this is one of those cool little like baby helicopter two seaters uh, that was just riding around. Imagine trying to take off like with the wind shear, shear on that, where you just like or try to land the helicopter on them. Yeah, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Like, in mo- like they need this in the Fast and the Furious. Like, we got to land the helicopter on that limo. <laughs> okay, so you know how, like, they always have the shot of Vin Diesel, like, working on a car in the first 10 minutes? And it's just, like, close up on him, wrench work, wipes the hand on the grease, looks up from the hood. People's like, hey, we got a job. He's like, yeah, what's it about? Cut to the wide. It's just a giant 100-foot limo. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> we got a job of breaking down this stupid limo that you've been building for three days. <laughs> Um, because it's totally impractical. Uh, and that's my other point about this. Um, they couldn't really turn this car. So all of their, it was like that roller coaster at Cedar Point where you go up and then you go down, you go up. Swinging ship. So you, you know, the swinging ship where you drive to the cool hotel, you make the appearance of the parade, and then you just put it in reverse and just come <laughs> back down the highway. <laughs> <laughs> down the strip, down the strip. Exactly. You can't even turn it around. You got to have a driving seat in the front or driver's driving uh, seat yeah. and steering wheel in the front and then a steering wheel in the back. And that was, I think, their biggest mistake. They should have just shipped this out to Las Vegas, right? And then they should have built a custom road. So you drive down the strip. Oh, yeah. And then you have, you like buy some land on the other side of Las Vegas. It has this huge curve that is probably, you know, Three degrees. <laughs> yeah, what's and, the turning radius? And it just you 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 circle out in the desert. You come all the way back. You go down the strip, and then you it's just like you know like a shake weight. Like it looks like a shake weight on both sides. And you just, but seriously, that could have been an idea. Up and down the shaft of Ella of Las Vegas. Oh yeah, but people they, would pay for that. But see, that's like a tourist trap. Right? Like you're a hundred foot limo with a bunch of friends. It takes you three hours to do the full loop. You get totally wasted beforehand. Like that would that was where they missed the mark. Or just with anyone. Like you pay you stand in line for three hours to take a ride down the strip to the other side. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Jay just missed. He just didn't have that click. He didn't have us. The idea. We're there. ideas guys. But that could have been sweet, right? If they just would have planned it out. And Vegas was the perfect spot for that because you know they look they like those crazy attractions. Unfortunately, he didn't have the foresight to get something like this off the ground. He couldn't figure, he couldn't visualize what to do with it. So though it was eventually rated in the 90s or measured and and recorded as uh, the Guinness World Record holder for longest like road vehicle ever at 100 feet, it really wasn't worth much more than that. Nobody ever bought it because they were like, this is completely impractical. You couldn't even pull up to a hotel like in the little horseshoe. You couldn't even fit it in that. So what's the point? I bet if you brought this up to some rappers, now they would oh, buy it in a heartbeat. Re- so that's the problem. Right now, it's sitting in the back lot, completely gutted, missing wheels. It's kind of sad. You can see the pictures in our notes. And it's just sitting at this place called the Autoseum, which is like a teaching museum for people who oh. are learning car restoration, and they just haven't gotten to it. The funny thing is they could just make like two limos out of it, or a 50-foot limo if they just <laughs> figure yeah. out the back end, right? Um. You know what? That's not a bad idea. I wonder how much you could buy it for, restore it, and like do my idea with Las Vegas. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the Velocity Chaos Podcast, where we have the second largest limos yeah. in the world. We just do live shows from the, from the <laughs> from American the Dream. Show? Yeah, <laughs> come on, like it right Is that a fish hanging out that window right there? <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be really cool uh, if somebody restored this. Where's this putting green? 
Like, how are you standing? You're like hunched out. Well, see, that's the great thing about putting. You're just hunched over at the waist, like just <laughs> squatting on a seat. Yeah. Just, okay. just, <laughs> Hold on. Whoa. Everything about this car is completely impractical. Yeah. Like, how are you going to land the helicopter? Yeah. Oh, is, the hel- is that the front end? Is the yeah, helicopter that's the front land? end. Okay, okay. That makes sense. I was like, why is that spot for the engine so big? Or is it in the back? No, it no. is in the back. That's that, the, Oh, the yeah. back, the back is would... behind the hot tub where the helicopter lands. I'm not going to lie to you. It would, be, it would be incredible to restore this and put it somewhere as a tourist attraction. Yeah, it's just a giant just to loop. see it, you know? But with Vegas, it's perfect because you just go straight down the strip. You drive, you know, X amount of hours, and you you just get a giant turn out in both sides of the desert. All right, here we go. I'm going to go genius. Jurassic Park on your God ass. <laughs> he spent way too much time figuring it out if he could and not enough time wondering if he should. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this is dumb. I wonder what Jay's doing now. <laughs> Jay Orbergs. I'm on the other side of you. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this is so sick. Maybe a Hummer, like get some headroom in here. <laughs> Yeah, if you did it with like, I mean, I know people trick out different things. Need some now. height. So like, he's he's look. You can see Jay Orberg was an eccentric. He did a lot of other crazy stuff. He did like the world's widest car, which is like two cars side by side, and then the middle part is just you. Like your kids could literally play in a playpen in the middle. Now that, um, yeah. So he's done a lot of interesting things. It's literally like a perfect square. <laughs> this guy's got money to burn. He's probably um, laundering a The weird and wonderful money. wheels of Jay Orberg. So this just wrote itself into another segment down the line uh, where we're going to check out Jay um, and, and check out his life because he's actually got some cool cars on here that actually look really neat. Anyway, that's uh, that's it. Um, I just want to talk about limos really quickly. I've been in a couple for like the whatever, the dance, the whatever. We didn't have a limo. We had a trolley for the wedding. I've always wanted with a couple really close friends to just splurge on a limo for a night and really go to town. Like just have fun, get pretty wasted and see what that world's like. In due time, in due time. But I mean, has that ever been an impulse of you guys? Have you ever done anything like, oh yeah. All of my so, limo rides have been lame. I'm just trying to say that. I'm really? admitting it. I'm admitting it. Yeah. Get out. No, dude. <laughs> the what I think I've only been ridden in a limo one time. Okay. And it was for my sister's wedding. Mm. The you know, it, it is, as men do, young men do, we congregated on a little impromptu bachelor party for our brother in law. Sure. And um our brother had texted us a week before. He's like, Look, I got a beat on a limo. Just stay <laughs> with me. How cool would it be? Because our sister doesn't want a limo, but we're part of the we're part of the, the yeah. man's <laughs> team. We can we can roll up in a limo and we had a neon green Dodge, oh. Cha- Dodge uh, Challenger. Oh yeah, a limo with with also with Lamborghini doors. Oh on it. yeah, and not like this, not like this, not like this. <laughs> and, and the best part was when we're sitting there drinking beers, like literally the week before the wedding. Uh, our our brother in law goes. He's like, yeah, man. He goes. She was trying to find a limo, and she was, and she pointed. She's like, saw this one green one. And was like, there's no way I'd be caught dead in that. And it just so <laughs> happened that. Our mother made us. She found out we had a limo. We didn't say anything about yeah. it. She goes, "Your sister better be riding in a limo." We're like, "Okay, <laughs> she's gonna right, have fine. to die first. <laughs> and our brother-in-law pulls up the picture of the very same limo. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and the best part was, we had a ball. I mean, yeah. we, we had speakers, lights, going the whole deal. That's what I'm talking about. I want to arrive yeah. at an event in a yeah. limo. I think I don't. I I want it. I want it to be twice. I want to sometime in a in a key lime green that one where you're like <laughs> to a party. And then I want it classy to like a freaking event where you're just like, boom, the the low old sedan type where yeah. you have to step up and out of it. That's you're in a tux. Like I want those yeah, two we'll experiences by the time I die. Those two experiences by the time I die. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do a premiere or something. But is am I is, is that still a thing? Are like, it's, I think it's thing? dying. I think it's, I think it's you, dying. You see a lot of people driving around SUVs now. Oh, yeah. Escalades. Escalades. Yeah, yeah. Escalades. That's the new thing. The Lincoln limos, man. That, those days, I think you're going like, you know, really? Trump Trump maybe rolls up in one every I now. I still think it's classy. And I just yeah. want to do it one time. I want to no, wear twice. I want to wear the white. Oh, yeah. Twice, but like <laughs> two different versions. Yeah, but the, yeah, yeah. the one, if I had to pick between the two, it would be that one with the black limo. I, I have the white scarf, you know, oh, and yeah. the tuxedo. And you get out and just, I just want to feel that. I just, I don't know why. I'm not trying to be vain. I'm just saying, I think that's something really cool from time gone by that mm-hmm. I think would be interesting. You're a dreamer. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm an ideas guy. But you're not the only one. Yeah. That's right. 
<laughs> but am I but am I the only one at this table who wants no, that? No, that'd be cool. Okay. Be so cool. we gotta do it together. Yeah. We'll make a pact. Velocity Chaos. 500th episode. I want my own limo. We should just get three. We should get three limos. <laughs> That'd be hysterical. You guys, gotta, you guys got a little <laughs> bar in yours too. Yeah. 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 Throw I, me, throw me some peanuts, bro. I can change the lights in here. It's pretty cool. I throw a catch with a baseball, like between the sunroofs. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't fly. I want to be That's that guy classy. who's like standing outside the the roof of the the limo and just pointing at people. You're a loser. That's really it. like you look like the loser. <laughs> yeah. Shoot a music video. Shoot a music video. Uh, all right. Well, thank you for letting me share my dream, the American dream. Maybe somebody will revive it and bring it back uh, to the place where it belongs in our conscience and at the forefront of our minds. Jay was pretty smart, but he wasn't brilliant. But you know what is brilliant? New game. New That new game we've been testing for that brilliant indie game company downstairs. That new game is totally great and has everything you could want from the new RR technology. That's real reality gaming we're talking about here. It's amazing. You literally feel everything happening in-game because it's happening to you in reality while you play the new game. I do not recommend getting shot in the first-person shooter section, but the romantic cutscenes are a blast. Head over to your preferred video game storefront today and use the code VCPODTESTRUN to get the first season beta test pass for free. This is not an actual product service idea. Just in case you thought it was, it's not. If there's something out there with the same name, we are unaware and have no affiliation and offer no judgment on the actual product service or idea. Oh, baby. Here we are at our uh, our last segment of the show. And um, we're about to be some master debaters here because, you know, DJ Knucklepuck, he's got he's got some things on his mind. He comes to us. He's like, guys, I got, uh, I don't know. I, I, I got a couple things I want to try out, but I'm not sure which one. Would you guys mind would you guys mind telling me? And I said, well, let's do it on the show. Let's do it right here. So, DJ Knucklepuck, what you got for us today? Could you use help with this decision, guys? Uh, I had somebody ask me this, and I think I only have one shot at it. So, I wanted to know, would you rather be able to grow to the size of a skyscraper or be able to shrink down to the size of an ant? Mm. I think it would be cooler to be the size of a skyscraper. For sure. Nah, man. Shrinkage. That, well, here, let's climb the shaft with me here. <laughs> climb the shaft. All right, I, I'm going to spit you some facts here. So skyscrapers, not generally categorized by specific height. Um, there are some that say anything over 100 meters tall is a, is a skyscraper, which we know with conversion, that's over seven feet. So some say it's 150 meters tall. Again, conversion, you know. Um, some that say even 80 meters tall, but no, no. Well, that's just you know, 100, 150 meters tall. That's pretty pretty damn. But I mean, I guess we could be as tall as eight hundred meters because there are super skyscrapers out there, and that'd be pretty pretty bomb to be that huge. I think. Uh, if we're talking about size here, you know, scale it's it's relative. But I, I think it's about benefits that you can provide to mankind, right? If you're small, imagine the research that you could do on a microscopic level. I'm approaching this from an intellectual perspective, and if you're as big as a skyscraper. What are you really doing? What are you really doing up there, heading the clouds, trying to figure it out? I don't have as many facts as my opponent, but I have heart. I have passion. And even though I, you know, my heart would eventually be the size of the head of a pin, it'd be full of passion for being small. Oh, I hear you. So I think it would be far greater to become the size of a skyscraper, though, because uh, there'd be so many benefits. You know, you think I'm just out here, you know, head above it all, no, no other problems. But no, just think, firstly, traveling, how easy, how much easier would it be for you to travel, DJ Knuckle Puck? You know, you're, you know, if you're six feet tall, you're taking about, what, uh, 30, 30 inch step, something like that. So if you say you're 300 feet tall or six, 600 feet tall, that's, you're, ta- you're taking huge leaps and bounds. That's like 200 feet, foot steps. Um, it, it, which is insane, the, uh, how quickly you could travel places. Uh, instead of taking 10 seconds to, you know, run a hundred meters, you know, what the fastest people in the world, you, that's one step for you, basically. Just think about it. Though you may travel, I think that it's more economic to be able to be satisfied with a smaller environment. If more people were small, like ants, we, we could essentially have a whole colony the size of the hexapod, you know, table right here. You could fit how many homes on this one table? 
and you would never, and you know, all the resources multiplying. I mean, this can of, of seltzer water could be uh, uh, clearly enough. I mean, it's the size of a water tower for an ant. I mean, this could sustain a whole, a whole city, uh, you know, for, for weeks. So we'd have conservation of, of goods, uh, and natural resources. But I also think that being the size of an ant would offer an incredible amount uh, of, of value to the U.S. government and its intelligence service. Imagine the spy work that could be done. You enter a hotel room that you know that certain delegates from another country will be in uh, you know, the next night. You shrink down, build your little campfire somewhere up on the, you know, the speakers, up on the sound system, and you listen in. Uh, when they come in that next day, I mean, the, the amount of reporting back could be phenomenal. I, I hear you on that one. You know, doing good. So doing good, you could be a ferrying service if you were, you know, a thousand feet tall. You could say, get into my hand and just carry people many a miles so so easily and effortlessly. And not only now we're talking about national national levels, the impact you would have. You could end all wars because who's gonna mess? With a thousand foot being there, you know, you know, sure, you know, nations might try to, you know, capture you and test on you, but you just turn into a thousand foot being and they're not a problem anymore. No one's going to mess with you at that point. So you could, you could literally end, you could go places where wars are happening and be like, I will crush you. And then just with a finger, you could end, you could be the, the person of judgment and deliberation in the world. That That's a, I mean... That's a true point. I, I, I concede to my opponent here on, on that. You could have a, 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 measurable, a measurable amount of power, but that's also a lot of pressure that, you know, that is immediately demanded upon you. If you were the size of an ant, you could offer so much to the world and to the people of the world without ever being recognized, you know, without ever having to be in the limelight because your purpose could be research, could be government intelligence. It could be whatever you want it to be and you would never have to be discovered. So this is for this is for the people out there who want to live their lives and not be the limelight uh because there's no hiding a, a, a even a 100 foot man. No hiding. No, no hiding a 100 foot man. I I understand, you know, yeah, if you do want if you do want to go that route of, you know, never being remembered for anything, getting blown away in the wind, that's fine. But if you want to be a god, that's right. If you wanted to be a god, People would be making uh, monuments for you. They'd be singing songs about you. They would have holidays in your name. You would you would have your own place to live because you are the giant among men. You would forever be remembered in history for your greatness and all that you can do. Again, I understand, but how long can this be sustained? If you are consuming whole oceans just to quench your thirst as a god, and I'm over here satisfied with the thimble from a from a pure aqua off brand <laughs> la croix va the I, I, what i mean i could go for centuries off of a happy meal from mcdonald's not to mention the the um, a measurable amount of physical pain you must go through in your hips and your body from the the pressure of the atmosphere pressing down on your immense bulk where, where me, I take on, I take on less. I'm almost as light as a feather. And though you point out that I could just float away on a small breeze or from a fart from, uh, you know, the neighborhood cat. The point is that I feel like longevity wise, you have less to break down. You have less worry. You have less literal pressure from the atmosphere to survive. I can't imagine the strain on your heart that that would be, taken from from your heart being the size of a you know small chick-fil-a <laughs> oh that's what you're ending that sentence <laughs> i mean you were talking about the amount of heart that screen. you would have <laughs> you amount of heart you had to just think of the the size of my heart would be being the huge but i i mean to, to your to your point of you know how how long would i be able to say i thought you know back to the original i thought you know to be able to grow that so i i, th I figured there was you know you'd be able to come back to regular size at times but if not even if not even, would you rather have 10 years of being the greatest person ever or living a thousand years as a, as a speck of dust? I believe the myth about the tortoise and the hare apply here. My opponent has cited speed and long distance traveling, has recognized 
you know, quickness of, of achievement in substitute for quality. But I do believe that in this case, I may be the size of an ant, but I have the mind of a tortoise and enduring for that period of time, the benefits that I could contribute to mankind would, I believe instill in any person, the desire to be the size of an ant over the size of a skyscraper. I, 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 I do agree. I do agree here with my, my master debater, um, being small, you know, there are, there are things you can do for people, but skyscraper, there are things you can do for people, but it is, it is a selfish choice. And I think it would be a great choice because <laughs> <laughs> why not? You would, like I said, no one's going to remember you as a small person, as a big person, you will be forever in history. And, and if you were a size of an ant, what would, what would you be doing? Be, be getting stepped on, getting killed by an actual ant? Like th- these are, these are the, the, the worries you have to deal with, but as a, as a giant, nothing can harm you. So it, those were our concluding arguments. You guys both make very telling points. Um, you know, thank you guys for spreading a little knowledge on me. You know, I just want to go up the shaft of things that I understand here and, and that, uh, sticking with a little bit more of a moral compass that we theme that we're going with today. I think, the t- <laughs> the the tip of the argument here is that uh i think it'd be a little more a little bit a little too selfish for me to be a to be a skyscraper i think i think it'd be you know just me carrying around my size 280,000 shoes that you know stepping on buildings probably wouldn't probably wouldn't suit my mind as good as being able to you know hey maybe i could just get that piece of lint out from underneath the refrigerator for somebody when you know when duty calls so uh, I think I think uh, I think I'd have to choose to go with being an ant, be the size of an ant. You know, uh, I think that's what I would go with. DJ Knucklepuck, I don't agree with your decision, but I respect the hell out of it. I appreciate you listening. That to was us. a fantastic debate, oh, sir. Great. Fantastic, wonderful, wonderful. Fa- much respect. Much Thank respect. you for joining me today, gentlemen. Appreciate you. If you have an opinion on this debate and you have a side, please let us know on Instagram, on Facebook, on any social media, or you can email us directly at velocitychaospodcast at gmail.com. We will definitely respond to you. We want to know what do you think would be better, being able to grow to the size of a skyscraper or shrink to the size of an ant? A little bit of yitty guy. Yes, cheers indeed. Here we have again. Um, you had early on, yeah. I think I don't know if it was episode twenty nine or twenty somewhere in in those first few episodes back. You had the Australian government. Oh yeah, buying the flag, flag. buying the yes. flag back, buying the flag, giving it back to the to the people. Nice. So here we have Memo Island to be returned to the Aboriginal community. So um, in Sydney's Harbor, there's uh, Memel Island or Goat Island, and it is the largest island in Sydney Harbor, and it makes the start of the uh, Eora songline, Bura Bira, where the eel spirit created the water course knows, courses known today as Sydney Harbor. So um, the island, it's about 300 meters wide and 180 meters long in size. So, you know, conversion, we know. We know how big that is, bigger than seven feet, naturally. Yeah, way bigger. <laughs> So they're they're spending about forty three million dollars to regenerate and restore Memel and um, integrate, you know, get the people back, kind of have it as like a little destination spot, get get people learning about, you know, okay. there, there's like you got like car- rock carvings and stuff on the island and stuff. Nice. And there's there, it's just like a small community of, you know, original people. And I just think it's um, it's nice that they're restoring it and then giving it back to the you know people that were there originally. Yeah, uh, I just thought that was a really good guy Australia thing. Just they like keep the getting it right. Yes. Uh, wow. It's it's kind of convicting not to get too deep into it, but it would be amazing to see places where, you know, native tribes could be what they wanted and support it in that, and that people could go almost like to a nature reserve where you're not going to leave anything or disturb anything. And it's not to say that, Oh, let's just go look at those people. But it's like it would be nice to actually get to witness it in a way that is is the way that they want it to be. 
you know? So I think, I think that's great that they're providing that space. Did you say it was an Island? Yeah, it was an Island. That's even better. Cause then it's just right exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They can, they can do their own thing. And if people do want to visit, you know, like you said, you get to learn about yeah their, the, those people and how they, you know, live lives. Cause yeah, you know, well, may, not everyone wants to be integrated in these big cultures and communities. Like, I wonder if the people there will regulate how many people come in because you know what i mean like there are places in the world where there's local people but they just turn it into a tourism kind of thing which is fine if they want to but how do you preserve what the locals want yeah you know and so i wonder if it would that'd be interesting if you could only get like certain amount of passes a year to go visit that'd be really interesting yeah and the cool thing the cool and the challenging part is like it's in the middle of sydney like sydney's a huge oh, wow. huge metropolitan yeah. area yeah that's crazy yeah, so here, just a little little excerpt from the article. So Minister of for uh, Aboriginal Affairs, Ben Franklin. Yes, you know him, Ben Franklin. Wow. Yeah, not that Ben Franklin, different one. Australia's Ben Franklin. Yeah, Australia's <laughs> current ben, ben Franklin. So he said a uh, committee will make recommendations to help determine how the island uh, is used. The, the memo transfer committee includes Aboriginal people um, and NSW government agency reps. Uh, and importantly, it's established, it is supported by the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council. Uh, 42.9 million, so 43 million funding boost over a four year period will contribute to upgrade works such as repairing seawalls, building, and improving wharf access. Wow. So, so it's really like, yeah, they're helping with the travel down, and, yeah. you know, maintaining so like less erosion and stuff and kind of keeping it all. That'll be amazing how this unfolds over the next years of how people from the tribes probably that have been dispersed come there and live there, choose to be there. You know, I think that's going to be fascinating. Yeah. What if there was a, a Ben Franklin, like every generation, like he just kept getting transported into different bodies. Cause that guy sounds like he's like really supportive <laughs> of like right. local freedoms and all that stuff. Like what if he just figured out how to just like boom, 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 Ben Frank, I'm Ben Franklin. I'm Ben Franklin. And he just keeps bopping around the world. He like exactly the pouring into cultures that need freedom. That's he's, brilliant. He's just, he's just around and you know, he made a deal with the devil or something. He's like, all right, all right. After this time, just stay low. Just you know, be a farmer or something. Yeah. And the, but he just always pops up in like government good. and stuff. He's like, too good. I, I can't take my hands. I can't <laughs> keep my hands I off. I can't I quit. Do it. I can't quit. <laughs> Got to help people. <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, that just goes to show you because in life, um, you, know, you can be the size of an ant and still change the world. You can you can work wonders. You can be a miracle worker. You don't have to be a giant doing giant things. You can be a little ant doing giant things. And, and, and you know, you could be, you know, monitoring someone watching a, a garage to see if someone's going to steal something. Or you could be casing a, a laundromat joint and seeing what the, the cash flow looks like. Because when you work your way up the shaft and then back down the shaft to the base and you get a little petty and then you back up the shaft to something more white collar, it, it's just, there's a lot of things that you know you shouldn't be stealing because it puts a burden on everyone else and and when you steal not only items you're stealing sense of security peace of mind you're stealing you're stealing time is what it is you're stealing you're stealing peace and we all just want to live in peace on our happy little island with our happy little trees and happy little bushes that you know we put there because you know it got give back to us so you know, when it all comes down to it and you're in the end and you're riding in your stretch limo, you know, you better look good and, and look back that, you know, you did a good job and you're you're proud of what you did. And I'm proud of you. All righty. This is a great summation, Luke. Great job. Great job. Beautiful Sometimes. job. Okay. We are wrapping up our show. Thanks for riding with us. This has been the 61st episode of the Velocity Chaos Podcast. So exciting to be crossing into a new uh, 10 uh, episodes. We are at our point of our show where we do recommendation station pulling in. Woo-woo! This is the spot where we make sure that you don't leave this show without a great recommendation. We recommend movies and books and TV shows and technology and lifestyle choices. Today, I am going to recommend a product. If you need four wheels for your limo, if you need five wheels for your limo, if you need 36 wheels for your limo, I recommend going to Goodyear Tires. 
every time I've gone there, I've had great service. People really help you out. Uh, their, their shops are professional and clean, which I like. It just kind of shows that they take care of what they're doing. And uh, most of their consumer tires are American made. So that's a huge plus for me that I really like to support American companies. I got good years. There you got the good years. Got lots of good years ahead of you. Oh, yeah. Um, and look, sometimes because they're, yeah, they are a corporation. They're a big company, right? But that does have perks because they sometimes can bend the rules a little bit, find a little rebate here, find a little discount there if you got a good sob story or if they just like you. So I do like the little bit of difference. Small shops, if you got a good mechanic out there, yeah, go with that. That's great. But at the same time, I do like the accountability of a, of a bigger brand, a bigger company. So and their tires are good. Uh, so the product is backed up for, you know, for what it is. Goodyear tires, highly recommend. Well, this has been exciting. I was just giving a little pause. Yeah, a little, little End of segment. Group. Okay, I got you. Makes sense. This has uh, been a great show. I've had a lot of fun. Thank you for letting me get some chest hair off and then exploring all the shafts, uh, you know, sharing your shaft with us. Um, I hope I shared mine with you. Um, but DJ Knuckle Puck, thank you for being here, man. You've been doing great. Hey, thanks, guys. It's always a good time. You really carried in a lot of those segments. I like when he gets involved. It really adds in and, and keeps... Luke and I from debating too hard. Um, debating Masterfully. Each, yeah. Debating each other's staff, shafts too much. Anyway, this is Nick uh, from the Velocity Chaos Podcast. Thank you for being here with us. We are excited to keep going on this journey with you. Uh, we will talk to you very soon on all our socials and the emails. Take it easy. And then signing off. Never mind. No, yeah, I am. I'm just getting. This is Luke getting cut off here. Uh, thank you guys all so much. We appreciate it. Hope you uh, enjoy this. And if you did, share it with a friend. If you didn't, share it with an enemy. And uh, like we always say, if you're the size of an ant, you sure can enjoy a whole lot of Luke's Linguini. Have a good one. Thank you for tuning in to the Velocity Chaos Podcast. We upload new episodes every Monday and Thursday. Be sure to subscribe and rate us on iTunes, Spotify, or your podcast platform of choice. Interact with us on Instagram at Velocity Chaos Pod or on Facebook and YouTube at Velocity Chaos Podcast. We are grateful for your time and hope you enjoyed it here. Please tell a friend and thank you once again.